Hey guys, sit back while I tell you a story today about picking apples, meeting Luis Guzman in abundance. So the other day was one of those amazing autumn days here in Vermont. The air was really crisp, yet it wasn't too cold. It was a bright sunny day. The trees were starting to change. It was, you know, picturesque. Vermont fall. Because it was such a wonderful day, and because there were still a lot of apples out there to collect, my friend Rachel and I decided to go scrumping again. While technically defined as stealing fruits and vegetables from other people's property, I see scrumping as the art of driving around and collecting roadside apples that would have gone to rot. So Rachel and I went out on a mission because we wanted to make scrumpy. I believe scrumpy is the old British term for homemade apple cider that's fermented. Because I took Latin, I'm willing to wager that the term scrumpy is derived from the act of scrumping. We went out and we found a stretch of deserted country road that was abundant with apple trees and we started to picking. And that day was some pretty good picking. We were finding apple upon apple upon apple. After only about an hour's worth of picking, we'd filled two giant feed bags full of apples. And nobody really bothered us. I mean, there were only two people who stopped for us the entire time that we were out there picking apples. The first person was this drunk old park ranger. He pulled up alongside of us and said, hey, what are you guys doing? We just told him, hey, we're picking some apples to press some cider. And he's like, ha, cider, I've been drinking a little bit myself. He proceeds to pull off to the side of the road, produce this gigantic plastic handle of Canadian Club whiskey and offers us shots of this putrid, putrid stuff. He was apparently a park ranger not too far from us. He invited us to the ranger station, which I don't think we're ever gonna take him up on that offer. He had clearly had too many pulls of that whiskey bottle himself and uh, yeah, was quite intoxicated. The other guy who stopped for us, you know, saw us walking down the road and slowed down. And again, this is a deserted country road. You might get three or four cars an hour driving by. And he stopped down, he was in a beat up Ford Explorer, and he said, hey, do you guys need any help? And at first my friend Rachel and I are like, no, no, we're fine, thanks. So the guy drives off. The moment he drives off, Rachel and I both turn to each other and say, was that Luis Guzman? Yeah, you know, Luis Guzman. <laughs> Yeah, that Luis Guzman. Turns out Luis Guzman doesn't live too far from us here in Vermont. And so while we cannot confirm that it was Luis Guzman, um, we both feel very strongly that it was him. And uh, yeah, if he's out there watching this video, I'd love it if you could uh, confirm that in the comments. That's some pretty weird stuff, right? So Rachel and her mom, Leslie, have this incredible antique cider press that they bought from a guy at a tag sale. This thing is awesome. It's got this old antique motor that grinds and crushes the apples, and then you just slide the apple basket down a couple of feet, and then it's got a press, so you can press out the remaining juices. After about, oh, I don't know, maybe about 20 minutes, we completely pressed all the apples. I would guess that we had about maybe 75, 80 pounds of apples. It ended up amounting to about four gallons of cider. We poured it into clean, sterile bottles. If you're doing this at home, it's really important to use clean, sterile bottles or else your scrumpy will be ruined. It's now sitting in my basement and we're gonna wait till, I don't know, sometime in December, maybe when we're having a holiday party, to bust it out and uh, have some good memories of the fall. What's incredible about an afternoon like I had the other day is I now have several memories. A drunk old man, Luis Guzman, hanging out with my friend, all bottled up in some scrumpy that's fermenting in my basement. And a few months from now, I'm gonna be able to pull those memories out and kind of relive that moment, relive that experience. I'm sure everybody's out there right now, whether it's harvesting stuff from their gardens or you know, trying to chop firewood for the winter, just getting ready for the winter. This idea of preserving the abundance that's around you is somewhat of a new idea to me, but I'm impressed with how much it both provides value in, in the form of whether it's food or drink or other resources, but at the same time, there's such a value from the memories that are preserved too. So uh, think about that as you are sitting down to can or chop firewood or whatever it is. Remember that moment you're in.